White, and they were descending on the falafel from the opposite angles. White ants. Yeah, and then they started fucking battling and like destroying Look what each you other did, Tony. over wow. the falafel. And this one team of white ants had like a black ant by its arms, and then this other ant was just pummeling it in the head. And there was like two ants like holding it outstretched, and another ant just like beating it in the head. And I was like watching it, and I was like, what the hell? Ants are mean. <laughs> Start down there. Who are you? I'm Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Hi. <laughs> and I'm Jamie J. Winnell. And I'm Tony Tones Hall. 
and we play as Flame and Peach and the Liberated Waffles. Liberated Waffles, you know, you can waffle, go back and forth about something, but then you liberate and you, and you choose something, you go for it, and it's also just fun. Um, but Flame and Peach comes from, Flame um, is for my grandmother who was known as the Red Flame, and it's sort of like the righteous anger about things that are messed up in the world. And then peach, because we live on a rock that's hurtling through the universe that has peaches. And so <laughs> we should appreciate them. We play with a lot of, a lot of guys, um, you know, who are going around writing political music. And they're, they're usually generally, you know, these verse, chorus, verse, pop songs. Um, you guys' music is a little bit different. It feels a little bit more like a marching band. Do you think this is designed for the movement, like on the ground more? You guys think, do you do that kind of thing? Or? Jamie and I started being a band because we were just playing music together and sharing songs that we both liked, and I was, had picked up the banjo. Um, but then we really started getting gigs because people wanted songs at their rallies. I had been in a marching band at some point before we really became a band of our own. Um, and there's one of the one of our first shows, one of our first pictures is us with our friend Nina on the stage. I mean, on the stage that is the town hall here in Northampton. Yay. And that rally, Front step. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember what the rally was for. But it was I remember, about the hunger strike to, pro yeah. to um, protest solitary confinement. Yeah. And they just they needed music. And the same happened to us when we moved to southern Mexico. So um, tell, tell us about good. Mexico. When were you guys there and for how long? And how does that affect your music? We went down in 2010, and then my brother traveled the world down to Argentina and then ended up back in Mexico and started having babies. In Chiapas. In, in Chiapas. Chiapas, yeah. Okay. And um, we couldn't resist the babies and we were doing a volunteer English class in a men's prison that a friend had hooked up. In Chiapas. Yeah. And we did songs with them. That was the best. Oh my god, we would bring in song lyrics in English and the guards didn't speak enough English. They had like a little bit of English, but not enough to read our song lyrics. Uh. And so we were bringing in song lyrics about like, solidarity forever and like Resistance. which side are you on? And then we would get in there and on the board we would write the English and the Spanish. Um, so that the students knew what they were singing, but they didn't ever have hard copy the Spanish movement songs. So that's how we got songs in there. You've, you've actually trained musicians who weren't musicians before to be in the band to on, on, on the basis of, you know, you like them and you, you shared values with them. A lot of bands form because people are good at music. And I've found that like, the most intense conflicts in my life have been because I joined a band with people because they were good at music. Mm. And they turned out to be pretty much an asshole. A few years ago, I was like, I only want to be in bands with people that I like, that I'm friends with, where the foundation of the <laughs> band is friendship. And then we move from there. And so with this band, we've been like a core of two people who are a couple. And yeah. then we've been roping in our friends from every direction that we could from mm -hmm. past and then sometimes when we just like we meet people and we're like you seem great you're probably gonna be our friend and like maybe the way to make you be our friend is to have you come to band practice. I could say that um, I, I, I came out of to Boston and music and theater scene and, and I was in a, on several bands and, and only one other band besides this band that I really have a good time. <laughs> All of the people who, who have the people who seem to drift through this band sometimes and I, every time someone leaves, I feel like, oh, it, it's sort of like a, a good place for people to land. Um, because the music scene is horrendous. Um, the whole music scene was pretty awful until punk came along and, and sort of busted through with, with yeah. do it yourself. The only reason I can think of being here is for, for the community, for these, for, these, for these friends, for these people who, and people who, who actually need something and and sort of communicate back and, and sort of like, yes, yes, this is what I want to hear. How do, how, do you, how do you find this material that you adopt for your music and how do you choose what goes in there? There have been a, a thousand ways to say uh, the very important points about like climate change or like being an anti-racist white person, you know? and. I can write my own ways to say these, but there are also like really badass people who've said other things before me, who by bringing their 
work into my own work. I'm like highlighting and displaying them instead of just highlighting and displaying myself. And so I think that feels really right, you know, to like take uh, Adrian Rich, who's like one of my favorite poets ever, and like the idea that Jamie was like, we're gonna write, we're like, I've, I think I've got a melody to go with this poem. And I was like, oh, you know, like, of course we need to just adapt that and go with it because then every show we get to say Adrian Rich's name, you know, and I get to memorize this poem like for real. And it's like, it's gonna be with me forever now. And then Jamie translated it. So like taking this already awesome work that I felt like, you know, the whole book that that poem is from is worth reading. Now at least one of those poems is like accessible to way more people in a totally different way. I think something else that Jamie loves to do is take chants and turn them into songs because they just get, chants get stuck in our head when we leave an action. Kim and Reggie Harris put this call out to musicians to make more marching music. Like, turn your songs into things that could be marched with. And so I took that as a little bit of a homework. Um, where did you meet Kim and Reggie Harris? At the People's Music Network, which is a rad organization that brings together musicians and other people um, to look at how the arts can support social movements. So in January, the People's Music Network is doing the Winter Gathering in Boston, and we are going to be running the Youth Creative Convergence. So we're trying to do a lot of stuff with youth. We have a kids band called Dandelion's Garden. Yeah. And kids are, sorry adults, kids are the best audience ever. Um, they dance much quicker, they do funnier stuff, um, and they sing along faster. So adults, look to kids for your some inspiration every once in a while. Yeah. What a wonderful yeah. way to end this. <laughs> you guys a lot, are so beautiful. So Thank much for you. Us. All right. Yay.